Shalom, Chabarim, Shalom. So here, 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 this is Ras Ayodonis Tafari, the Lion of Judah Society, Moa and Bessas Emnegeti Yehuda, Arye, Mi, Mate, Yehuda, here, here, here. Ras Tafari, Rabbi here. So here, we're putting on the, the scholarly, the Hebrew scholarly, Hebrew for Ras Tafari, for all, for all. But first, you know, um, to whom more is given more is required so here 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 let's address the divine feminine we had spoke on this in a previous in a previous um vlog on rastafari yehudim on rastafari jews we had addressed this well we 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 mentioned it briefly and we went into a little bit of it but as we said there we we should bring forward a fuller video where we bring forward the evidence and the documentation for this particular claim that we are one of the one of the first at least maybe one of the few perhaps maybe even the first we're not really too sure about that because we have not heard any other scholars or teachers in Torah that really have made this particular connection that the Ruach HaKadosh the Holy Spirit the Spirit of Truth of Hakadosh Baruch Hu Baruch Hashem of the Holy One, blessed be He, blessed be the name, has revealed to us in the addressing of the Divine Feminine. Many ones and ones from a white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, so-called Christian and world uh, Gentile Anglo-American times of the Gentile perspective, this 400-year perspective, often say in Christianity and what's called religion that it's always saying he, 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 you know, he and man and male, but the divine feminine, they say, well, where is the divine feminine? The divine masculine, especially in Western whitewashed Christianity, is, is so overt and obvious, and even so much so that some people even, you know, um, insinuate some of the abominations, you know, that are even rampant and increasing among the children of men and humanity this is not the place to even get into addressing that but the 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 hakamim the hakam you know the wise will recognize what we are in a sense alluding to but here is to address the divine feminine the divine feminine is revealed is revealed is found but is revealed in the very first word of the Hebrew Bible, just to make our, we say, proposition, so to speak, you know, what we are stating on the record, and then we're going to prove it right here with the scriptures, and particularly going from low degrees to high degrees, from the KJV, the King James Version, 1611 to 400 year Bible, to the Hebrew, because as the original 1611 Bible said, I thought we had a copy of it right over here. Let me just look on the, the little shelves over here and see if it's right there. But if you look in the old 1611 Bibles, there is that forward page that says like, like diligently, you know, translated out of the original languages. So we're going into the original languages because a lot gets lost in the translation enough enough much gets lost in the translation so we're also going to share this we have the audio for this so we're recording the audio and the video so the AV the video but also an extra audio as well to share on the Rastafari podcast radio to share on the Rastafari sabbatical radio as well LOJ Society the Lion of Judah Society of His Divine Majesty yes I Rastafari so here 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 what are we saying we're saying that the search or the questions concerning the Divine Feminine the Divine Feminine say well where's the Divine Feminine even when ones say the Trinity as described biblically, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, some find it necessary to say, well, it's actually Father, Mother, and Child. Okay, but the child could be male or female, right? Or one might say children, but then the children are also male and female, can be male and female. Can be male and male or female and female, but male and female, right? As it was in the beginning. So we're going to the beginning of the Bible, 
to reveal from the Hebrew, from not even just a Hebrew, but from a learned, an intelligent, a studied, a studious, in other words, Hebrew perspective, the revelation of the divine feminine. The divine feminine is revealed in the very first words of the Hebrew Bible. Because this is to counter the pseudo-feminists and maybe womanist, feminists. And it's not against women or this is actually for them. Because what other biblical Hebrew or Israelite has really gone into the scriptures to really reveal this. This is the first thing that should be revealed. And this is the first thing that in our Rastafari sabbatical studies, in our Torah portion reading and feedings, this is one thing that we seek to be diligent. Since the revelation was shown to us, was revealed to us in the studies. To study, to shew yourself approved. Because much gets lost in translation, as we mentioned. And looking at the English KJV Bible, which is a, a good stepping stone. The KJV Bible is a very good stepping stone. The problem happens when ones become overly monolinguistic, mono one linguistic, one language. So they look at the KJV, and we even heard some bibliolators, like an idolater, if somebody worship idols, you have bibliolators that would say, oh, woo, 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 woo. The King James Version of the Bible, you know, is even better than the Hebrew. I say, this is the craziness, religious fanaticism, right? Instead of good scholasticism, instead of good scholastic study. So here, 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 let us reveal the divine feminine, the divine feminine principle in the very beginning. Now for Ainai's Rastafari, many of Ainai, affirm and acknowledge King Alpha, Queen Omega. Acknowledge that balance, the male and the female, the divine, the divine double helix, right, of the matrix. When we say the matrix, it's not the matrix movie, we're talking about the matrix of creation. The matrix is just a, a kind of an operative terminology, it can be applied in many different senses, you know, but this is what happens in the Western Gentile world, right, is whatever has been kind of like um, revealed or, or, or or kind of overly emphasized becomes the one and only thing that people overly, you know, overly focus on. So we're going to reveal right here, I'll say for one of the first times ever, I mean, go and look it up for yourself, right? And it's not looking for anything for ourselves, but for the glory of HaKadosh, or the Holy One, Baruch Hu, Baruch Hashem, and His Word and His Revelation, especially for us as the once lost, now found, black and brown people of the Bait Yisrael, the Beta Israel, right? Especially here in these here Americas, this North Country, and the Caribbean, carried beyond the trans-Ethiopian ocean, Ethiopic ocean slave trade. As Amos 9 and 7 says, Are ye not as the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Yisrael? So here, here, ready, ready, ready? Grab your pen, your paper, your sacred scripture, the B-I-B-L-E, bring an uh, attentive right a willing and attentive mind pay attention that is the price of the truth how much does truth cost well the first course is to pay attention so pay attention and also do due diligence we're going to go through this at somewhat of a lively pace right here 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 because there's a lot to not even a lot to present but there is the presentation to present this right here of the divine feminine. So the divine feminine is revealed in the very first words of the Hebrew Bible. And here we have the very first word right here. This is from the RSS, Rastafari Sabbatical Study, number one in our Torah readings and feeding, the sabbatical manna, manna. Also referred to as the weekly Torah portion, but I and I Rastafari, the word sign, we burn out the week and be strong, right? Be strong in Yahweh, truth and life and the knowledge of the King of Kings Christ. Yes, I? Yes, I. So here, 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 Bereshit. 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 Some will say Bereshit, but really it's Bereshit. Sheath. Bereshit. So we have Bereshit, which is translated in the Bible as in the beginning, in the beginning. So we have a couple of slides right here 
to to share right here let's see if we can share this right here go through some of these slides right here at the beginning we're speaking about creation right speaking about creation and the earth just note and just write this down as a note you could put a question mark if you don't agree or you don't see it that way put a qu question mark in your notes speaking particularly to the Habarim and, and also the Talmudim to our peers the Habarim our companions our and I fellows and also the Talmudim the Talmudim the disciples the Talmudim right and Talmud means teaching so give us the teaching of Gurmawi Nagusa Neges and his Imperial Master Gurmawi Halasalasi says in the foreword of the Book of the Seven Seals, the Metzaf Kedus, the King of Kings Bible, he says the foundational Mesaratawi Kwankwa, the, the foundational language is the Ibrit, Ibrit, the Hebrew. Alright, so here we are going to the Hebrew, that foundational, groundational language. So the earth is, this is the note for y'all. The earth is not a planet. The earth is a plane. Again, the earth is not a planet. The earth is a plane. So we often refer to the earth as the earthly plane. People say the planet. Well, on this plane, on this plane, right? Not plane, you know, the plane that one fly in, so to speak. But that's also interesting because, you know, in flying and getting a higher view, of things ones and ones can see the truth of this particular matter for themselves that the earth is not a planet and not a wandering star the earth is a plane right and we're looking at all this scientifically what does science mean science from the latin word scientia means knowledge scientia or some would scientia is the old latin way of saying it if we were speaking latin way back in the day scientia nowadays from the oxfordian and British they say scientia scientia science science or scientia scientia means knowledge what do you know and how well can this knowledge be verified right someone says they know such and such right they know water is wet and if you never touch water before right and you touch water the water is wet as many times as you touch water water is wet same thing with fire someone says fire is hot hot to fire and if you touch or are touched by fire the first thing that will be revealed that you'll get to know that you will get to know is that fire is hot so beware of science falsely so called science falsely so called so let's go to this word right here first of all right here so here we just revealed right there as one can see we just revealed right there one of the verses that help us to prove the divine feminine right in the beginning so here 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 conscience conscience there's conscience there we're looking for the verse where it says science there we go right there first timothy 6 and 20 o timoteos keep that which is committed to thy trust avoiding profane and vain babblings I got a lot of these debates out there. People are talking about, oh, they're going to tear apart the Bible and they're going to prove this and that and, and the Hebrews and the Exodus never existed and the Israelites never came out of Egypt and this and that and the next thing. And these are monolingual scholars. They don't have the gift of the Holy Spirit. They don't have the gift of discernment. They don't have the gift of tongues. And when you know the truth or know even as much truth as you do know that can be verified and proven, scripturally biblically and actually in reality you begin to recognize what this verse is saying right here to keep that which is committed to guard to hedge that which is committed to thy trust avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions get this see the word oppositions of science so science is in the bible even in the king james kjv translation we're not talking about science in a kind of a compound word like conscience or conscience, conscience, right? We're speaking about it even right here within the sense of science, the so-called, we could say, the root word. We have science right here. So it says science, falsely so-called. Now, what is this in the original language from which it's translated? Science, falsely so-called is gnosis gnosis like we say gnostic you heard gnostic gnosis that's the greek word 
the Koine Greek word for science, gnosis pseudonomos. Gnosis pseudonomos. Gnosis pseudonomos. So you see right here, let's bring that up. Gnosis, you see gnosis right there? Right, gnosis, and this is the other edge of the sword right here. That double-edged sword, it cuts when it goes in, it cuts when it comes out, it cuts on both sides. So gnosis right here is knowledge. Right? Knowledge signifies in general intelligence, understanding. So how can one try to prove that the Hebrews this or that and they have not gotten into the Hebrew? They only are deep ending on a monolingual translation. Right? Knowledge signifies in general intelligence, understanding. The now there's categories of this type of knowledge, right? That general intelligence understanding. There's the general knowledge of the Christian, as it says right here, the Christian religion, or of HaMoshiach, as we would say, the Messiah. And then in the B it says, the deeper, more perfect and enlarged knowledge of this religion. So now here they're applying this in the New Testament, as a New Testament quote from the Koine Greek, right, to science and science in this context. A deeper, more perfect and enlarged knowledge of this religion or this faith we can say such as belongs to the more advanced and the sea is especially of things lawful and unlawful for Christians. Now Christians, Meshachawiyah, right, Messiahites, we remember that Yeshua, HaMoshiach, whom the world calls Jesus Christ or Christ Jesus is a Yehudi, is a Jew and the Yehudi, the Jews, and also he is our rabbi, Rabboni, right? Yeshua HaMoshiach, he's our master, our teacher, right? So the Hebrew is really the first point of reference, even for the true so-called Christians or those who have faith in the Messiah. But here the D is moral, you, you get it? It says moral wisdom, such as is seen in right living. Right? Then it goes into the part of speech. What's the part of speech? Note the, the part of speech. There's words. And this really is not so much in English. Notice in English, in this monolingual, this Gentile, the, the, the times of the Gentile language, this English language, as Sisla Kalanji says, um, you know, English is ruining, you know, black and brown peoples is ruining black people's mentality. Right? Not that English in itself, but it's English only. So if it's translated by others and they translate and they say this, then you get all these debates, these vain babblings and back and forth. And people think they're learning something when they're actually going around and around on nothing. So here, gnosis is a noun feminine. When you say, no, parts of speech. Because a lot of people might use the interlineal softwares and the Strong's Concordance and Reference, but and they may read well, but they don't understand. It's important to understand even how the Strong's Concordance, what information it's bringing forward, and how to interpret this information in order how to properly use it. It's like in science class. In science class, there's a lot of experiments with different things. You know, some some chemicals that are flammable or things that might be dangerous if it is used or abused or misused you know if it's used inappropriately so here we have noun feminine strong's definition is from the g1097 so we're looking at the g1108 and this word comes from the g1097 and that's gnosko that's the word gnosko and gnosko means was defined as to learn to know come to know, to get a knowledge of, to perceive or to feel, to become known, to know, to understand. And, and this is interesting, in the Yehudi, in the Hebraic, you know, there's, there's um, what we call the law of two truths in Hebrew, right? It's almost as we as black people use certain words, right? We use certain words and can be used twofold. If you're outside the spirit of the community, you will hear the word like this, like we say nigga. You know, and ones will hear it as nigger, but we say nigger, you know, they will hear it their own way. So there's a twofold truth, knowledge, gnosko, here, and it's all coming from the Hebrew foundation, the foundational language in the Yehudi idiom. It can be for sexual intercourse between a man and a woman. Here's what we have in some areas of the translation, and he knew, and he knew his wife, and Adam knew his wife, for example. Right? Or, or he knew, you know, the man knows his wife, and that is a way of using the Hebrew, because Hebrew 
is our language as so-called once lost now found black and brown people the Beit Yisrael the Beta Israel right this is why when you really study it you begin to see the patois the, the, the slang sense and where something on a if you come from a Gentile or foreign mind a non-Hebrew Israelite mind or spirit or way of thinking you you miss the mark and this is where a lot of the confusions have come in and the gnosis pseudonymous or science falsely so called to become acquainted with to know right so this is the root of these Gnostic ideas but in spite of this being right here and we're defining this from the Bible just from the so-called 66 books of the King James Version people will talk about this Gnostic thing and even some so-called pseudo wasp Christians you know white Anglo-Saxon Protestant Christians will make it seem like gnosis or knowledge is a bad thing all right now we're not talking about what occurred in the beginning so forth and so on but here's where we're at not in the beginning but in the right now 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 so here gnosko is a prolonged form because we have gnosis the short form gnosis and ginosko right this is the prolonged form ginosko of a primary verb to know to know absolutely it can be used in a great variety of application of many implications like the word science science the word science is the other way for example even in among black and brown people science is used in another sense as well right and with many implications as shown at left with others not thus clearly expressed and then it breaks down after the colon right there and and the hyphen it says allow be aware be aware of feel have known or to be known or knowledge right to have knowledge right perceive be resolved can speak be sure understand right have a good standing what is your standing so here going to the gnosis word for science the g1108 knowing knowing the act of knowing right knowing in the sense of the act of knowing that is by implication knowledge right some people have heard somebody else's knowledge but they don't really know they're not in the knowing right so knowledge so the same word gnosis elsewhere in the new testament what's called the new testament brit chadash al-iskidan is translated as knowledge so when you're reading the translation you come across knowledge and it's the new testament most times it happens to be the word gnosis which is at the root of Gnostic. Gnostic is one who has Gnosis. And there's two kinds of Gnostics. There are those who have the true knowledge, right, of the King of Kings Christ, right? Grow in grace and the knowledge of Adonai Yeshua HaMoshiach, of Getach and Yesus Christos. And those who have, as 1 Timothy 6 and 20, and Rav Shaul, the Apostle Paulo, right, Paulos, he says right here, and to what avoid profane and vain babblings and oppositions of gnosis and then the second word the g5581 80, word is pseudonymous 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 basically means pseudo false nomos name pseudonymous right false false name false name right falsely named so you hear some ones and ones, a lot of these ones in the black con, con, con consciousness community talk about, oh, they're not dealing with religion, they're dealing with science, they're not dealing with belief. But if you listen to scientists, scientists many times will say, well, based on this study and this research, we believe it is believed such and such. So even though they're dealing with science, at some points of science, even science in the world, they have to express that, well, they believe this or they believe that. Now, let's just kind of move forward right here. We, we want to introduce this particular idea from the scripture, right? That there is science, knowledge, falsely so-called. So people say, I'm dropping the knowledge. I'm going to drop that knowledge, blah, 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 right? Some do, truly, but there's many, many, many who don't, right? Avoid the broad way, right? You know, broad is the way that lead to destruction and confusion and death. But narrow is the gate that leads to life. So right here, 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 just picking up with this right here, as we just had to make a note because we're speaking about the beginning, we're speaking about creation, just touched on the Garden of Eden and a kind of response, a 
so so to speak, but a clarification to um, Nepal um, Shada on the Sarneta, you know, um, House of Consciousness platform, so forth and so on, some things that she had said, and we immediately recognize that is some of the Gnosis pseudonymos. But unlike other and ones who are Hebrews and Israelites, we're not going to, you know, call out of a name, this and that, and the next thing, but just deal with the facts and the evidence, you know, because it seems as though ones and ones are truly seekers, and if they have the patience and diligence and follow up on what we have presented, they will know the truth for themselves. So this also is kind of important right here. This is, we use this in connection with Moshe. Some would use it in connection with um, um, Orset. Right now, Oset is the way the Egyptians pronounce it. We say Eshet, right? Eshet Isha. We have Isha, which is woman and wife. Isha, Eshet, right? Eshet, right? So here also with the Kabbalistic science, right? The Kabbalah, the Kabbalah, right? Of Rastafari, right? Here, 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 who we be? We be the black Jews of the lion of the tribe of Judah of Moa Anbessa, Ze'im Negede, Yehuda, Machiber, right? The LOJ society right here, here, here. Now, this right here was going to use it because when we were going to talk about the two lights, right? We're going to talk about the two lights right here, like the greater light and the lesser light, right? The greater light and the lesser light. And this right here is a picture that brings out on Sabbath Eve, right, which is the Friday, Friday evening. It's the woman, the woman, the honorable woman of the house, the wife, the mother, who gives the bracha, the blessing, about roughly 18 or so minutes before sundown over, you know, the table and with the two lights right there as the initiation of the... Uh, the Shabbat, the Yom HaShabbat, the Sabbath day. The Sabbath day begins from evening based on the biblical scriptural principle in the beginning, even in chapter 1 of Genesis of Bereshith. Evening and morning is one day, so the day is counted from the evening. But the point here is that even in a true Hebraic sense, the divine feminine and also the divine role of the woman is acknowledged in counterfeit Christianity wasp christianity white anglo-saxon Protestant christianity often it is not and this is why ones look at the bible and say it's just talking about a singular you know male god and there is no woman there is no feminine and we say well that is only because english is confusing your mentality right the english only the monolingual lingual you know emphasis is confusing ones and we brought this up too to show like the seven the seven lights you know some of the seven days you know so using some of these word pictures right to help to bring out and to help to articulate certain aspects of the truth right we'll return to this right here and here 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 right we have the empress empress menon right empress menon the consort right of the king of kings you know many referred to as Queen Omega, King Alpha, and Queen Omega in that balance of the male and the female as it was in the beginning. Let us create man in our image after our likeness. Male and female created he them. Now ones will say, well, we have Adam, but where was the woman? Well, the woman came out of the man. The man actually, we could say, first gave birth. I'm going to say this on the record. The man, Adam, the first one to give birth was a a man. Let me let that sink in for a moment. Now people say, well, what was the rib? No, that's how the translator translates it. It's not as the translator translates it, right? That same word rib in Hebrew, if you study that word elsewhere throughout the Hebrew scriptures, you might get a little more light on it. We define that properly as the chromosome, referring to the chromosome. Male has X and Y, according to verifiable science, correct? And the female has X and X. So we have X and Y, X and X, right? So the rib, right, would be the side component. So if you have X and Y and you take from one side, right, you can take from one side as Yahweh lo heinu, HaKadosh Baruch Hu Baruch Hashem did, right, and brought forth 
the woman and note the language brought forth the woman so the divine feminine in the beginning right that's the subject matter of this discourse right here the divine feminine right in the beginning so here 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 we're utilizing some of the um word art word pictures as points of reference right here um, we, we like what they're doing here, but sometimes it's always not completely right and accurate, each of the slides. This is from HaimBenTorah.com, just to give that accreditation acknowledgement right here. Fair use, fair use, fair use. So here we have the Beit, Reish, Aleph, Shin, the Yod, and the Tau. Once again, the Hebrew letters are Beit, Reish, Aleph, Shin, Yod, and Tau. All right, so we use the opening portion just to set the context of what we're bringing forward here. The revelation and revealing of the divine feminine in the very first word, the very first word of the Hebrew Bible. This has been revealed to us, right? We've shared this with the Chabarim, right? And then as we look here and there, now note, if you go in quickly now, after you see this video, you look around. See who else has really brought this particular point forward, right? Because to give acknowledgement of the truth, like we're not going to say we're the first, right? But one of the first, especially in this community, right? In the black consciousness community and among the black or the Hebrew Israelite community and even maybe among some of the black Yehudi community, but this is our community right here. So we first revealed it to our community. Right? We did a couple of videos, also a couple of audios on this on the Rastafari Sabbatical Podcast over the last five to almost ten years. And in spite of that, ones that I guess have not picked up on it, perhaps it's because of their monolingual, you know, their monolingual, um, you know, their monolingual condition, you know, their pre-existing condition of being monolingual. In other words, their condition of only being able to you know, um, see or only accept maybe the KJV in the English and take little words here and there, but not seeing, you know, not not studying scripture diligently, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little. In other words, going to different points of scripture as we do, you know, as Yehudi, as we do, right? This is what we do. We do is what we does. And we find that particular tradition of study, the, the Bait Midrash, Midrash study even amongst the Israelites of Ethiopia. So that's another um, historical and even spiritual um, and biblical connection, right, of our community, right, just our roots, like the roots, when talking about the roots of Rastafari, yes, I, these are our roots right here. So this is the first word. This is actually the first word that you'll find. Now, I looked at this right here. Um, there's this group here that deals with some of the paleo hebrew so forth and so on right and it's interesting what they say right here they're looking at each of the letters bait right each of the letters each of the hebrew glyphs in the ha alef right ha alef bait right each of the letters also has a it's, it's like a, a a symbolic a symbolic relationship for example the bait refers to house, even the word bayit. Bayit in the archaic Hebrew, bayit is house. In the royal Amharic and the Ethiopic, we have bait. So we have bayit is uncontracted, and then we have bait. Bait is a contraction. And whenever we have a contraction, there we have a birth. Right? When we look at contractions, especially in the revealed sense amongst us as human beings, right? So we have Beit, Reish, Aleph, Shin, Yod, Tau. Beit, referring to house. Reish, Reish, actually, they have here of the highest one, of the highest one, Reish. But Reish also refers to Rosh. Rosh means head in the Hebrew. Rosh, right? Rosh is head. Rosh is head. But then we also have Ras. The word Ras or Ris in the Ga'is. Ris, right? In the Afro Shemitic, Ris. And Rosh is head. Rosh Tifari. Rosh Tifari. Tifari coming from the Tiferet. 
Tiferet in the Hebrew is Kabbalistically found on the tree of life. The Tiferet, right? And the Tiferet link with Tafari. Tafari, the name of the man child. Lij Tafari Mekonen. This man was born Theia. Theia. We have that in, was it Psalm 87, verse 4? This man was born there with Ethiopia. This man was born there. Also, Revelation chapter 12. Right, the man child. So this revelation. So it's a revelation on multiple levels, but let's get to the basics here. So we would upgrade the Reish instead of just the of the highest one, because the highest part of the body is the Rosh, is the head. Then the Aleph, the Aleph, El Elohim, the power, the powers we can say, right? With Yahuwah, with he who be who he be in the singularity. Right? So, Aleph referring to El Elohim, the power. Then we have Sheen. Sheen they have here shall be destroyed. So, what they're doing is taking the Hebrew letters and linking it. We could say Shaddai. Shaddai. Shaddai is Shad means breast. Right? And it has a dual form in the sense of on the feminine aspect, the breast, the nurture of the breast. This is where some people say Shaddai, you know, is speaking of the goddess, but it's bringing out the feminine aspects from the beginning. But also Shad can be like, you know, like Rasaman used to say, you know, you know, your lung have to be strong to, to burn sensomania, you know, you know, or to, you know, the, the Aishans, you know, so strong breasted, strong chested, man to man, go work out, you know, and build up his pecs, right, the pecs, the pectoral, so we can see the dual sense of it, right, both in the male and the female, because he created man in his image, the Elohim created man in his image and after his life, the, the true Elohim. He who be who he be, the one Elohim. Before him there was no Elohim. And truly after him there is no Elohim. People who call their, their God constructs are also referred to as Elohim. But those are, are Elohim Acharim. Acharim. They came afterward, man made up stuff. We're getting to the beginning. Then we have Yod. Yod, the Hebrew letter Yod, they have here by his own hand. By his own hand, the Yod. The yod. The yod is the hand, but the yod also is the fist. The yod is the fist. That's why it looks that way even in the Asherit Hebrew. Then we have the Tau. Now remember, we're looking at the letters, the Asherit, but then you can see in the white box is the ancient, like the paleo, the earlier form of writing. So here they have on a cross. It doesn't mean on a cross. It means a mark. A mark. Right? There's a mark. So the ancient Tao was written as a unilateral cross. That means an equal cross, almost like the coin of the Greek cross. It was also written as an X, as an X marks the spot. An X marks the spot. So just making this link right here, 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 right, with the letters, with the letters. Now, here is the first verse right here. Bereshit bara Elohim et hashemayim we'et ha aret. This is the first verse right here in Genesis from the Hebrew. This is the language out of which we have the KJV, the King James Version. So in the King James Version, it says, "In the beginning." B is the preposition in by way of on reshit. Reshit means beginning. Well, Reishith, actually, let's explain this. Reishith is the feminine word for head. Let me let that sink in for a moment. So now let us um, verify this and give you a point of reference here using my sword, my sword, my sword, my sword. So let's type in in the beginning. Let's type in in the beginning. You see in the beginning, Genesis 1 and 1, right? So we're using an interlineal software right here. Genesis 1 and 1, in the beginning, Elohim created the heaven, heavens, it should be heavens, because it says Shemayim, Yod Mim. Now, some will say, well, if you say heavens, then it should be gods. But see, why we don't say gods is because the verb bara, bara is singular. The verb bara is singular. See, a lot of ones not understand the linguistics. They will say, well, the word Elohim is a plural word, and yes, 
it is a plural word, but referring to the true good, the true God, the power, Elohim, Chaylehim, there is the singularity. You have heard of singularity, haven't you? Well, we're speaking about the Hebrew singularity right here. This is the singularity. In the beginning, the powers he created. In other words, the powers. If it, not so much God and gods. This is all Latter-day, Gentile, um, Germanic, you know, super imposition, right? Therefore, Elohim created. So the verb is he created. This is where a lot of ones, even we're trying to say with um, Napa, right, Shada, in her kind of agnostic re regurgitation about, you know, that the serpent was telling the truth in the garden and that the Elohim lied and he wasn't the Elohim, but one of the Elohim because Elohim, it was just a lot of mumbo jumbo. I mean, we understand where she got that from, right? And many of us also were there already. Once we started to, you know, um, put our shoulder proverbially to the wheel in studying the Torah and studying the Hebrew to know the truth for ourselves, we began to see why that was faulty. It was faulty back in the days with the pseudo-Gnostics, right? And it's faulty today with the latter-day pseudo-Gnostics who are regurgitating this but because they lack the gift of tongues. See, that's what occurred in the upper room of Zion when the disciples and apostles stayed in the upper room and the cloven tongues of fire, what does it say was revealed to them? What was revealed to them was the discernment of tongues, the Holy Spirit, and the, and the cloven tongues of fire upon their what? Their, their rosh, right? Right? Rashi, right? Upon their heads, right? Gave them the discernment of tongues, of linguistics. And see, for the Hebrews and our Israelites, we as Hebrews and Israelites, for them then, and the Judahites, for them then, is as important for them then as it is for us now. The discernment of linguistics and getting out of this KJV only monolinguistic and throwing around a word here or there and not able to understand each of these words. For example, we can go through each of these words right here, right here with the, the interlinear software, and that's good, but then that is just one step. That's just one step. Stop half-stepping. That's a half-step if you go there. Now it's getting into the reading of the verse and the reasoning of the verse to see how these words go together, together, right? So in the beginning, Elohim created, he created. Elohim, if one's going to say gods, okay? You're going to say gods, gods, he created the heavens and earth. In other words, the gods were he, were not they. It does not say they created. That's the point that we have to make right here for the singularity. Because there's singularity in HaKadosh Baruch Hu Baruch Hashem. And there's the Hebrew Trinity, the true Trinity, the Holy Trinity. But let's go on. In the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. Let's compare right here. And let's go to the, the Tanakh. Here we have the verse right here. Bereshith bara Elohim eight ha Shamayim we eight ha'aret. That there is the ancient pointing, the archaic Hebrew. In modern Hebrew, some might say, Bereshith bara Elohim eight ha Shamayim ve eight, ve eight, ve eight. They say ve eight ha'aret. But that's just the modern Yehudi and the Slavic Ashkenazi, their, their speech pattern. The ancient Afro Shemitic pointing is we eight, wait. Wait, we eight, wait, haret. Right? So let's get into the words, the breakdown of the words, word by word, right here. The first word is the H7225. So when we say that the divine feminine is revealed in the very first word, that's how we began off this vlog right here, is it's, it's revealed, it's found, it's recoverable, but it's revealed. Right, for us in the Torah studies in the Bait Midrash, it is revealed, right, in the very first word. What's the very first word? The H20, the H72, Slicha, right, so Una, right, H7225. H7225, let's click on it. We have Reishith. Now, it says Be Reishith, but dropping the preposition, the Bait, the Bait is the B letter. Dropping the bait, which means in, on, by way of, and getting to the root 
the root word in that opening word phrase, bereshith, that phrase. So that one word is actually translated as a phrase. In the beginning, bereshith. Actually, it says right here, in reshith. In reshith. In she. In she. In her head. In she. In principle. Let's bring it up. Let's bring it up. Reshith. Reshith is brought out here as first, beginning, best, chief. So A, beginning, as we have in the beginning. B, first. B, reshith. In starting, in first. Firstly. But the key is the part of speech reshith is. And wisdom. And chokma. Right? Chokma. C is chief. D is choice part, right? Now they say right here it's the same as the H7218. Now here we have Rosh. Remember we mentioned Rosh when we dealt with the Resh, the R in the Reshith, right? Rosh is the Hebrew for Ras. So I and I, Rastafari, the new name, precious name, new name, Rastafari, the elect, right? Speaking about the elect, Rastafari. Shall have a new name, Rosh Tiferi, Rosh Rastafar. So here we have this word is head, top, summit, upper part, chief, total sum, height, front, beginning. In other words, this one word depends on its context. This is why we go to the text of the scripture and we point out that there's a subtext taking a verse, but many verses are taken out of context. The context is what else is connected to that verse, right? And then the fullness of the passage or what is being said, whether in the chapter or the book, would be the super text. That's coming to that overstanding. So the first thing is the standing, understanding, understanding, coming to overstanding. So here, 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 this word here, Rosh, when applied to man and animals, the human being and animals is Rosh is the head. So in Hebrew to say Rosh is one and the same linguistically in the other Afro-Shemitic language, Amharic, to say head, Ras. Also from the Ge'ez. In the Ge'ez it's Re'ez. Re'ez. Having the same letters. R, A, and S. Or S-H in this case with the Sheen. Because we have sheen and seen. Seen. So we have rosh for head. Top, the tip, the tip of a mountain is the rosh. The height of stars, Hebraically speaking, is the rosh. Chief head of man, of a city, of a nation, of a place, of a family. The priest is referred to as a rosh, as a ras. The head, the front, the beginning, the chief, the choices, the best. The head, division, company, band, the sum. So the sum of something also is referred to as, in the Hebrew, as it's, respectively, it's Rosh, right? It's Rosh. What is the Rosh of this? What is the Rosh of that? What is the sum? The sum of the matter, the head of the matter. So let's scroll up. Here they say origin from an unused root apparently mean to shake. Whenever they say this, it's always going to the Afro-Shemitic root and the linguistic connection with the royal Amharic and the Ge'ez, and the Ge'ez or the Ethiopic. Note the part of speech this is. This is the point here. The part of speech this is, is a noun masculine. So the word Rosh is the root part of Reshith. And reshith with the tau, the tav, the tau at the end is a feminine. It's the feminine companion of this word, male and female. So that principle of male and female is also found linguistically in the Hebrew and Afro-Shemitic languages. Check, check, right? Here, we scroll down right here. They say from an unused root. See, what they're doing is covering up the Ethiopic aspect. And how do we know this? Because Strong's relied heavily on Gesenius, Gesenius's lexicon, and studying Gesenius, Gesenius' lexicon, there's many words which were better defined based on them going to Ethiopic, the language called Ge'ez. So we have the head, 
as most easily shaken whether literally or figuratively in many applications you can go down this right here and then when they tell you like after the colon is always how it is used right how it is used in the translation so in some places it's translated as bad in some places as beginning as captain chapter uh, chief right the chiefest the chief place the chief man is the roche or the ras right chief things the head things the company and then you go through it and through it and through it you know principal summit top now we went there because here is the word that we have in the very first the very first word bereshit here we're looking at reishith and you can see that reishith here uh, reishith right you see the phonetic reishith reishith right here reishith is the part of speech it is is a noun feminine how do we know this we know it's a noun feminine because of the final ending is tau is a tau is, is the x the t the t the x right that's how it looks in the paleo and in the ancient writing Right, the T and the X, right, is at the end, right, at the end, and that there in the linguistics of biblical Hebrew tells us that it is a feminine, right, that gives the indications of feminine word. So we already went into the 872, 18. That's the masculine root word. So we have Rosh, and then we have Reishith. So the Rosh, the male, masculine, Reishith, the feminine. So the very first word. Bereshith. It could have been Birosh. It could have been Birosh. Right? But it says Bereshith. Now, Bereshith, the first in place, in time, in order, in rank, specifically first fruits, according to HaTorah, are referred to as Reshith. Here in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 in the Hebrew, Reshith is beginning. Chief, chiefest, first, first fruits, part, time principal thing principal thing I want you to take note of that take note take note take note so what do we have here we have Bereshith Bereshith bara Elohim eight Hashemayim with eight Haaret that's the full up verse right there 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 so here's what we're gonna do now that we have established that in the beginning is actually saying in the Reshith in the Reishith, as we have in the Reishith. In the beginning is saying, in the Reishith, in the feminine Reishith. Well, what is the Reishith? Well, here, 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 here is where we're going to now seek to prove this by the scripture. Let's go to wisdom. Let's go right here to wisdom and principle. Now here, 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 we're in the wisdom principle, right? Here we have the book of the Mishle Shlomo, right? The Proverbs of Solomon. Now Proverbs of Solomon is strictly a Beit Midrash book and it's to teach the sons, mainly to teach the sons wisdom. Now once I say, well, what about the woman? Because it's focusing on the man, teaching them wisdom and wisdom is she wisdom is hebraically is feminine and wisdom is 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 raised up to be the principal thing right that the men need to know about her and this is why we're doing this vlog this video and this study and this year because the hebrews israelites our people and others need to understand the divine feminine in the hebrew bible Right? The divine feminine. That in Reshith, in wisdom, Chokma, Elohim, He, the powers, created the heavens and the earth. That was, uh, I think, a very good translation, if we may say, because we've been working on this and trying to use English to, to convey the message is very, very challenging. This is why we just don't beat up on, you know, the anonymous translators or whoever, you know, but we just seek to correct and clarify. So it says the fear or the reverence of Yahuwah, of he who be who he be, is the beginning. Is the what? Is the Reishith. So remember, this instruction is directed to young disciples, Talmudim, to sons. 
speaking of she, speaking of her. It's almost as if Shlomo in the Hebrew is saying that we man lack something. And even the bar mitzvah, the bar mitzvah is to help us gain wisdom, right? In order to serve he who be who he be, hakadosh baruch hu baruch Hashem, we need to recognize she. Just let that sink in for a moment. See, see, this is the Hebrew way. This is the line upon line, precept upon precept. So here, right here, we are now in with um, on Proverbs four and seven. Here is the connection with Reishith. I'm gonna read the verse first, and then we get to the Hebrew. Wisdom is the principal thing; therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Wisdom. I'm going to bring this out, then we'll go to the Hebrew to prove it. Wisdom, she, is the principal thing. Reishith. Therefore, get Hokma, Get she. Get her. Remember, this is instruction. says, my sons, hear the instruction of thy father. Forsake not the law, the Torah, of thy mother. Did you know that Hebraically, the Torah is also feminine? The Torah also, the instruction, direction is also feminine and here, wisdom from the very beginning. So when we read this verse here, this is the key that Shlomo HaMelech, who was given that wisdom by Adonai, right, brings out as instruction to sons and to young disciples, or just to disciples, mainly to young disciples. This was a part of the true ancient Bar Mitzvah, the rite of passage. This is all Hebrew rite of passage. So the problem is you have a lot of Hebrew Israelites out there who have not really gone through a, a proper rite of passage. It's like, mind of mind, some of the elders you say, like, so-and-so born big. You're born big. This is why when Robain, I and I rabbi, the rabbi of rabbis, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, says, ye must be born again from above. Because there's two kinds of wisdom. In James, the epistle, to, in the epistle of James, James' epistle, in the New Testament, there's James, the book of James. It speaks about the two kind of wisdom. One wisdom which is from above, which is holy, which is the good wisdom. And there's the other wisdom from below, which is evil. Now remember that wisdom is feminine. So that means the wisdom from above, she is good. But the wisdom from below, she is bad. Overstand the discernment here. All right? So it's not sexist or anti-woman, no. It's actually pro-good woman, pro-good feminine principle, the true divine principle. Proverbs 4 and 7 says, wisdom is the principal thing. Let's view more and let's get into the Hebrew right here, here, here. All right, you're going to try to make this within an hour or so, an hour or so. Look right here. Here's the Hebrew. It says, reishith chakma kene chakma. Reishith chakma. Reishith, the principle is chakma. Chakma or chokma, as some would not say, Reshith chokma. The principle is wisdom. She. The principle is wisdom. Reshith chakma. Kene, kene, get chakma. Get chokma. O bekola kinayanika. And in all of kinyanika, ka, ka. The ka there, the suffix there is speaking to an individual male. So, because this is the instruction. To young disciples, right? It says, U and be by way of call all kinyanika, kinyanika, and all of your getting, man, kine get, kine, that's that's an imperative there, like get, kine bina, kine bina, kine bina, get bina, get bina. What is bina? Bina is understanding. Bina is also feminine. Uh oh, uh oh. So we have the, the principle in the beginning. So in Reishith, in wisdom, the powers, he created the heavens and the earth. And now here in Proverbs 4 and 7, Shlomo is revealing why it says that he was so wise, that wisdom that he was given was so wise. They said he understood the secrets, all kind of secrets, but in the Rastaman and the Roots Reggae Tuna says, Solomon was the wisest man, but he didn't know the secret of a woman, but he knew the secret of the beginning. He knew that divine feminine 
in the beginning, Reishis Chakma, Kine Chakma, Ubekol Lakinyanika, Kine Bina. Overs, overs. And people say, Yeah, but, but what? This is the truth right here. Look, it says, Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. It's not saying every woman. Not every woman is wise, but women have a kind of a natural inclination to wisdom. But is it the wisdom above? Is it the higher wisdom? Or is the wisdom below? Is it the lower wisdom? You know what it is? Is it the wisdom below? Or is it the wisdom above? All right. Now, let's go to this right here. Let us get to, let's go right here and let's go to chapter 8. Let's get to chapter 8 right here. We're going to chapter 8. Doth not Chokmah cry? Doesn't she cry? And understanding put forth her voice. So understanding is feminine. Wisdom is feminine. Let, let's know what's being said here. So how could the Hebrew scriptures be biased against, you could say, the feminine or woman when we have all this evidence right here? Especially, see, a lot of this is not really seen from the English perspective. But it's clearly seen right in the Beit Midrash, like in the, in the house of study. When we're studying Torah, we're studying scripture, this is so clear. It's so clear right here. We're reading the Hebrew, we see Bereshith, and then we see Reshith Hokma. Bereshith, Reshith Hokma. And then we come to chapter 8 right here, right? And let's come to 8 right here and go down to verse, let's go to verse 22. Verse 22. Notice this right here, verse 22. What does verse 22 say? The, the English says, well, we're going to read it with the putting in the Hashem instead of reading. The L-O-R-D is the Gentile tetragrammaton. It's the Gentile tetragrammaton. The Hebrew tetragrammaton is Y-H-W-H, Yahuwah, Yahweh, right? Yahuwah possessed me in the beginning. This is wisdom speaking. Chokmah, wisdom, she, from the beginning speaking. She is testifying here through Shlomo HaMelech. Through King Solomon, the wisest man of his time. None wise like him before and none wise like him after. All right? But there's a greater than Shlomo. I don't know Yeshua HaMoshiach. But here it says, Yahuwah possessed me in the beginning of his way. In the what beginning of it? What beginning? Hebra Hebraically, what beginning you think we're talking about? We're talking about Bereshith. In the beginning. In the Reshith. In her. He had already, Yahuwah, Eloheinu, he who be who he be, the power, the powers, we can say, already possess her in the beginning of his way. So we see the divine masculine and the divine feminine. We see the double helix, the divine double helix. It's not as the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant counterfeit Christians getting lost in their own mistranslation or their own translation. Right? He says, before his works of old. She goes on to say that, she says, I was set up from everlasting, from the what? From the beginning. Right? From the Rosh. Now remember, Rosh is the masculine. So she is the Reshith, who he, who be, who he be, worked through to create. But she says that she was set up from everlasting, from the Rosh, from the Ras, from the head. Rastafari, uh, or ever the earth was. So that means even before the earth, remember it says in the beginning, Bereshi bara Elohim, Eit HaShemayim wet Ha'aret in the beginning, in Reshith, in wisdom, the powers, He created the heavens and the earth. And she's saying that she was already there before all of that came about. This is what the testimony is. Verse 24 says, when there were no depths, no deeps. You say, oh, that's deep. Before there was anything to say, oh, that's deep. When there were no depths, she says, she says, divine feminine says, I was brought forth when there were no fountains abounding with water. One of the interesting things for us as Torah scholars is, he told the heavens and earth and creating this and creating that, but the elements are never spoken of in, in the creation. Well, at least the elements of water and the elements of fire, nor the element of air. The earth is spoken of, but she's speaking and she's saying 
before the earth, then she said, or ever the earth was, to say before the earth was, when there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, were settled, before the hills was brought forth, the hills being brought forth. It's interesting, this terminology, we'll get into that hopefully as we go forward. She said, while as yet, she says, Chokmah, the beginning, the Reishith, the principle says, while as yet, he, she's giving credit to he, even he who be who he be, the Elohim. So how dare these ones talk some good, well, it's because they're monolingual and English is corrupting their mentality. English only. While as yet, he had not made the earth. What? Uh, huh? Excuse me. What does Genesis say? It says, in the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. But she is saying, while he had not yet made the earth, he didn't even make the earth, and she was there. Chokmah was there. The divine Hebrew, divine principle was there. Nor the fields, nor the highest part, nor the highest part is the Rosh again, of the dust, of the dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens. So she's explaining what went on before and at that first, what that first verse is talking about in Genesis. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass up on upon the face of the deep. You talk about things are deep. You got to compass the deep. When he established the clouds above. When he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he gave to the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his commandment, when he appointed the foundations of the earth, she was there. Now it's interesting, the commandment is the mouth. You see the word mouth, the pet, right? The pet. When he gave to the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his mouth. His mouth, literally in the Hebrew, his mouth, his pet. When he appointed the foundations of the earth, then I was by him. She was what? She was by, she was with him. So we have that, we could say we have that, he said, male and female, let us create man in our image after our likeness. So who was he speaking to? Who was the Elohim speaking to? In a sense, we could say he was speaking to our mother, Yeshua HaMoshiach. Just as Christ says that wisdom is justified by all of her children. So our mother, right, think about it. Then I was by him as one brought up, as one brought up, right, Amon. You see, Amon, uh-oh, uh-oh, as one brought up, Amon. As an Amon is an artificer, an architect, a master workman, a skilled workman. She was with him. She was one, she was as an architect. She was as an architect, a skilled crap. And I was daily, day by day, speaking about the days. First day, day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six, Shabbat, day seven. His delight, she was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him. This is interesting because we call the Shabbat, the Shabbat is likened to a bride. The Shabbat is likened to a mother who intercedes for her children, Hebraically. Rejoicing in the habitable part of his earth. And my delights were with the sons of men. Now therefore hearken to me, O ye children, for blessed are they, Esha Ashrei, are they, this word really blessed is happy. In the Hebrew, the Beatitudes of Adonai and Yeshua HaMoshia, Jesus Christ. For happy are they that keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise and refuse it not. Blessed or happy, is this the happy word? Yes, Ashrei, Esher, is the man that heareth me, watching daily, day by day, Talmudim, brothers, Day by day, study this book, study of wisdom, meditate on the wisdom of, of, of Mishle, you know, um, Mishle Shlomo. 
at my gates, right? Watching daily at my gates. Where it says, broad is the way that leads to destruction, narrow is the gate that leads to life. Robeinu, our rabbi, Yeshua, say that. Waiting at the posts of my doors. For whoso findeth me, findeth life, and shall obtain favor of Yahuwah, of he who be who he be. Ratzon, Ratzon, Milfaneka. But he that sinneth, he that ucketh, fornicateth under the crown of king, he that fork up, right? He that sinneth, that's what it means, chata, he that lacketh against me, wrongeth his own soul, wrongeth his own psyche, his own nefesh. All they that hate me, all those who hate chokmah, all those who hate the reshith, all those who hate the divine feminine principle in the beginning, love death. Love death. Mavet mawet. Now, this is where it's so interesting. Check out the video concerning did the Elohim, did Elohim lie? Right? And was a serpent telling the truth and all that? Check that out. Check that video out, brothers and sisters. We're going to just sum up and seal up here. This is just bringing out the divine principle. There's more. But just chew on this for now, right? There's more in the beginning, the seven lights, the seven days. Here's the verse, Bereshit bara Elohim. The eight, the, the, the Aleph and the Tau, the Alpha and the Tau, the Hebrew Alpha Omega, the Aleph and the Tau is usually untranslated particle. It's a direct object uh, subject marker in the Dictuk, um, the grammar of the Hebrew. Right, Bereshit bara Elohim, and some some of us see this to be the Moshia, that word, the word that became flesh. The word that became flesh is actually the Son. So, who was the Father speaking to? Some say the angels. We say he was speaking to wisdom, and he was speaking to the Word, the Son. He was speaking to the pre-incarnate Son and to wisdom from the beginning. Bereshit bara Elohim eit hashemayim weit haaret. Right? And then a breakdown. This is the starting point of the reality. Right? You know, when we start to get into the Hebrew. Right? This is the real study. Right? This is the real study right here. Rastafari Sabbatical Studies. Rastafari Sabbatical Radio. Check out the podcast, brothers and sisters. We have it Monday to after the Sabbath, Saturday Night Live on Monday, 10.30 p.m. On Tuesday to Saturday, Saturday evening, Saturday night, 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. Call in before the 1 a.m. Iowa, 515-602-9761, 515-602-9761. Got to get ready for Wisma, Wisdom, Wisdom Wednesday. Wisdom Wednesday right here, here, here. B'Rei Sheath, right? In the beginning in the feminine principle he who is the powers created the heavens and the earth and the earthly plane shalom habarim shalom check out the description check the descriptions for more info check the description the links the contacts give thanks for the donation you know the cash apps to help the ministry and the works yes i rastafari